Today, babies with Down syndrome are the most endangered on earth. And for me, this is very personal. Just under three years ago, our world was blessed with a sweet baby boy named Andrew. He has Downs. His parents are very close friends. Andrew is a true joy, and his family celebrates his life every single day. But in the United States, 67%, 67% of babies diagnosed with Down syndrome are aborted. Two out of three. That was Senator Steve James of Montana speaking on the Senate floor last week, addressing how babies with Down syndrome are disproportionately aborted in the womb. He went on to say abortion is a tool of modern day eugenics and announced he is now co-sponsoring the Protecting Individuals with Down Syndrome Act, which bans abortions solely because of Down syndrome. Danes is the founder and chairman of the Senate Pro-Life Caucus. He also announced last week that even though the Senate is under a pro-abortion majority right now, he plans to introduce 14 pro-life bills this Congress, including one that prohibits sex selection abortion and one that defines that life begins at the moment of conception and is protected by the Constitution. Joining us now from Capitol Hill is Senator Steve James of Montana, chair of the Senate Pro-Life Caucus. Senator, welcome back. In that Senate floor speech we just listened to, you mentioned little Andrew, who has Down syndrome. We featured Andrew on this very program. Why is it important to you to speak out on behalf of the unborn with Down syndrome? Well, that's why we've got to continue to protect the most vulnerable in our society, the unborn, the disabled, the elderly, like little babies, like baby Andrew. Uh, he is a joy to the family. He has an older brother, an older sister, and it's shocking to see what's going on in our country where they're using selective abortions to abort these down babies. And in, in the moral contradiction cannot be more evident. You think about how Democrats and Republicans, everybody comes together for Special Olympics to ensure that we protect those with disabilities that relates to a, their way of life after they're born. And yet when it comes to uh, being in the womb, the most dangerous place for a down baby is the womb. Two out of three of those down babies are selectively aborted because they have an extra chromosome. Mm. This bill that you're co-sponsoring to protect those babies, do you have any hope that it will get a vote on the floor? We do. In fact, I give a, a big shout out and thanks to Senator Inhofe of Oklahoma, who has been helping lead that effort to bring it to the floor, to bring it to the attention of the American people, to shine light on what's going on with this modern day eugenics. Just because of the chromosome configuration of a down baby, they are being aborted. Mm -hmm. And it's chilling. You go to a country like Iceland. In Iceland, you don't see down adults, down children, because they virtually have aborted all of them. We cannot allow our country to go down this path of really doing selective abortions because of chromosomes. Mm. Senator, you announced last week you plan to introduce 14 pro-life bills, 14. But considering the Senate is under a pro-abortion majority right now, where can these bills go and how, as Senate pro-life chair, do you plan to protect against Democrats working to repeal the Hyde Amendment and pro-life protections? Yeah, well, we're fighting hard up here in Capitol Hill. I'm very pleased to see that we now have 45 U.S. senators who've signed a letter that I'm sending to Chuck Schumer that will say that we will oppose any legislation that in any way goes after the Hyde protections or any of these pro-life protections we fought so hard for over decades in some cases. So we now have a filibuster-proof majority that will ensure that no matter what Chuck Schumer tries to do with the pro-abortion forces, we can stop it in the U.S. Senate. That is some big pro-life news. Thank you for sharing that. Senator EWTN News Nightly's White House correspondent Owen Jensen asked White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki whether President Biden is going to make any effort to reach out to pro-life Americans after rescinding the Mexico City policy last week. Here's her response. Well, those have long been the president's positions, and uh, he certainly uh, was just restating them and delivering on promises he made on the campaign trail. But the president will, re will reach out to all Americans, um, and that is uh, how he's going to govern, what he talked about in his inaugural address, uh, and he has every intention of delivering on that promise. 
Senator, what are your thoughts on that? And do you have any hope President Biden will reach out to pro-life lawmakers such as yourself, especially considering he previously supported the Hyde Amendment? Well, look at what's going on right now in our country. Uh, millions of dollars were spent with Planned Parenthood, other organizations uh, on behalf of the pro-abortion lobby. And now what you're seeing is uh, they're cashing in on Joe Biden's campaign promises. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not optimistic that we're going to see any moderation from President Biden. They are lurching to the far left, the, the most extreme pro-abortion force in this country now have, have their way with this administration. It's a tragic outcome. Uh, I, I wish President Biden would go back to his original roots of protections of the Hyde Amendment, where he supported it. But he's changed, as has, unfortunately, the Democrat Party. So the most rabid, radical, anti-life, uh, uh, pro-abortion forces are now at work on Capitol Hill. That's why this fight is very intense. It's very real. And I'm just grateful for so many of my colleagues in the United States Senate who are standing together to fight on behalf of the most vulnerable, to fight on behalf of the unborn. Absolutely. And that, filib that filibuster-proof news is big news for the pro-life movement. Senator Steve Daines, Pro-Life Caucus Chair in the Senate, thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. We are joined now on Skype by Marilyn Musgrave, former U.S. Representative for the state of Colorado and now the Vice President of Government Affairs for the Susan B. Anthony List. Congresswoman, we just heard Senator Steve Dane say he plans to introduce 14 pro-life bills this Congress, despite it being a pro-abortion majority. As someone who worked in Congress for years, what's the significance of this, even if those bills don't go anywhere? First of all, let me say that we are so proud of Steve Daines and his heroic leadership on life. As you said, he's the founder of the Pro-Life Caucus mm -hmm. in the United States Senate. That is critically important. Uh, he is tenacious, and that's exactly what you have to be in this political arena. You know, majorities come and go. Uh, it's really great to serve in the majority. Sometimes you can't do that, but what you can do is be faithful uh, in defending life. And that's what Senator Daines is doing. He's working very hard to protect the Hyde Amendment, advance the cause of life. And those things have to be front and center before the American people. So we look forward to the day where we will, where we will have 60 votes in the Senate and these pro-life bills will be signed into law and we will be saving babies. I just applaud his tenacity. And back home in his state of Montana, state legislature has four very strong pro-life bills going through the process. That's so encouraging. One would be informed consent, banning late-term abortion, and adding safeguards for women and girls. So great things in Montana and great things from Montana as Senator Steve Daines leads on life. We saw this week President Biden welcome 10 GOP senators in the White House to discuss COVID relief negotiations. The core of the president's message seems to be about unity. But, Congresswoman, do you see any way the president will be welcoming to pro-life senators and what the Senate Pro-Life Caucus is trying to advance? Is there any potential room for negotiations in your eyes? Well, I, I don't have any hope in this area. Uh, in regard to life, there's actually no daylight between him and abortion extremist Kamala Harris. Uh, sen uh, Senator Hyde support, or Senator Biden supported the Hyde Amendment. It was a politically, uh, political expediency. He has moved away from that. And uh, Maris polls just came out showing that a strong majority of Americans, and I might add, that is Republicans and Democrats, oppose funding abortion with their tax dollars. So as I think about Joe Biden, if he can't find it in his heart, if he can't look back to his beliefs, I hope that he'll see that it's politically popular uh, mm. to support these common sense pro-life measures. But unfortunately, he's giving us all the wrong message in regard to uh, supporting life. Mm -hmm. We only have about a minute left, but pro-life lawmakers on Capitol Hill face an uphill battle these next two years especially. What's your message to pro-life lawmakers right now? Protect, hide, and preserve the filibuster and be faithful in standing for life. Uh, we're tenacious in the pro-life movement. We're not going away. And we have great heroes in the United States Senate that will continue to stand for life. 
Mm, well, great insight as always. Marilyn Musgrave with the Susan B. Anthony List. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Catherine.